Hello. 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 Sorry, I am. I my office has been double booked today, so I Hello. am literally like kind of. I've got my phone camera over there, my laptop on my lap. It's just been a whole thing today, so I'll probably be looking down a lot. So I need to look <laughs> down to see everyone. Hey, good to see you. How is everyone? Happy. <laughs> amazing amazing oh my god this is crazy like I think this is probably gonna be one of my bigger zoom calls today I actually got 400 people signed up to this oh wow fantastic congratulations thank you thank you someone was just talking about YouTube or AI or something a minute ago I heard someone else let me check yeah, I, was, I was listening to uh, video oh that's what I was hearing okay because I did hear a voice I was like that sounds like someone's giving a presentation <laughs> and I've just started <laughs> yeah so how is everyone so I'm just trying to adjust this camera here because I it's, it actually irks me because I'm I can see myself looking down and I'm like I don't want to be looking down I want, but then you can see my laptop <laughs> <laughs> I know. problems with technology today but anyway how has everyone's weekends been really fantastic you know we have a uh, snow here in sweden and uh you know christmas time is just around the corner and uh uh yeah it's good it's really good nice. uh, i'm i'm happy to and i'm really looking forward to our meeting in the in at the end of this month disarray yes. yeah talk about the human contract foundation and our human rights and human responsibilities Absolutely. I think it's such an important topic to kind of talk about. So I just can't absolutely can't wait. Um, yeah. Right. Let me just get my notes up because I am literally kind of like running. What is it? What is the, the phrase? Is it um, flying by the seat of my pants today? Yep. This is an ADHD world here. So, you know, oh. I'm going to be. Okay, so I'll, I'll uh, um, um, shut the microphone and the video off. So good to see you. <laughs> this is as well. you can leave, you can leave the video on if you want it's absolutely fine um I will I will kind of want everybody to kind because I that's how I kind of tell whether or not you're engaging so I do need video on if you can leave it on just mics off video on and that'll be absolutely perfect awesome um Tony how has everything been it's been a bit pretty good I can't complain it's well, it's been a good weekend I went to the beach I, I'm enjoying it you know? All right. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I'm just going to grab my notes here. Uh, Suzanne, how have you been? Yeah, been great. Thank you very much. All right. Yeah, is, is, cool. Has anybody got anything interesting coming up this week? I've just completed a TEDx talk, which was fab. So that can come off my board now and I'll replace it with something else when I've got the next thing in mind. So, yeah, really oh pleased Oh, my with God. That. Congrats. <laughs> Thank you. That's amazing. Really that. that is absolutely amazing. Right, I'm just going to try to split screen this so that I've got my notes on one side and I've got your beautiful faces on the other. If technology will keep up with me today because I apparently moved too fast. Cool. Awesome. All right, let's move that there. Oh, uh, scroll, 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 because I've got like a bazillion notes because this is probably kind of one of my favorite things to talk about. I absolutely love branding. If you know me, you know, I'm absolutely obsessed with it. Um, It's been like a huge part of my whole career, Uh, the whole like for years and years and years. So, I mean, I've been doing marketing for 15 now um but branding I kind of fell into branding about eight years ago probably actually it's more like 10 years ago but I've been doing like really focused on branding for the last eight um and like I was like wow this is so cool because like every other marketing person I started off and I was like okay yes you need to have a brand but your brand was very kind of how to put it empty for lack of a better word um where you know I'm, I'm talking like 10 years ago when you didn't really need to have as much consumer engagement where you know you can still kind of get away with typical logo slogan half 
asked kind of website thing. And, you know, that kind of worked then. Um, branding has completely changed since. And you cannot get away with that kind of stuff now. So I think it is really, really important for us to remember that. And, you know, if you if you've not if you've not um kind of gone through the journey and you or you've gone through a very similar journey to me where you started up in marketing and now you're just completely off kilter with what's going on today that's absolutely normal so you know don't don't beat yourself up about it um and just keep in mind that you know it's just it's just part of the growth process it's just part of the process if you do typical marketing, then you're now going to need to remember in 2024, I would say of the last few years, especially post COVID, but moving forward, especially with AI being kind of mainstream now, we do need to remember that branding is incredibly important. It's been, it's more important now than it ever, ever, ever has been. So um, someone's got their microphones on. Can they switch them off? Let me just mute everyone all right that's everyone muted because that is going to be a little bit annoying for everybody else um right so I love to hear from you but I think right now everybody just wants to hear kind of you know what we're talking about today so don't as I said don't beat yourself up if you for instance have not gone through the transition yet um this is why we're doing this today this is why I do a lot of free stuff I think a lot of people out there especially entrepreneurs who are bootstrapping we are currently living in a global cost of living crisis and I appreciate that there are consultants out there who you know are able to charge two three thousand pounds for these kind of calls but I do think that there's a massive gap between consultants and people who need consulting and that's why I've started to do these kind of calls because I think it's really really important that we help those who need it. The people who can't afford the £3,000 consultancy fee, they are the ones who actually need the consulting more than anyone else, honestly, because they need the help to be able to grow their business at that point. I would love for everybody in this room to be able to hire me and pay me 10 grand an hour. Like That would be amazing. Not for me, not for the money-making thing, but because you can afford to now pay 10 grand an hour. That, that is life-changing. So that's where... I want to help people elevate their brand and elevate their business. I always talk about taking it up. I am very aggressive in my messaging. So I will say, yes, let's supercharge your business. And when you meet me in person, you're like, oh, wait, this girl's actually like really nice. She's not as harsh as she sounds. Um, so that is something that I am transitioning in my own branding, because guess what? I am the branding expert, the brand maverick, who has had issues with my own branding. And it's because branding yourself is one of the hardest things to do. And the reason why I'm saying that is because I think it's important for us to recognize where we do fall short as well and that we are all human. We all do tend to, you know, kind of push brand to the side. I did it. I did it. I was, I'm very, very honest. Um, and yes, I did do that. I did go, oh, you know, we'll do this later. We'll do this another time. It's not really important right now. And do you know what? That is actually so detrimental. And I then went, I got a message actually from a fellow consultant who went, oh, you do realize that your branding is disjointed, right? And I'm like, uh, sorry, what? Because I was so busy doing the work that I was like, oh crap. And things are moving so fast. And the reason why I'm sharing this today is because I think it's important for us to recognize that we do need to cut ourselves some slack. We do need to remember that, you know, branding is a long game. It's not right. It's not immediate. We have to be able to go, okay, this is a process. And branding, the work with branding never ends. But here's one thing that I do differently. And that's why I can very confidently call myself a maverick because mavericks tend to go right when everybody's going left. And branding for me is your absolute foundation. It is the basis of your business. And bear with me for a minute on this because it's going to sound absolutely crazy. But I think your brand needs to be dictated and needs to be driven by your business objectives. 
So say, for instance, your business objectives is to add an additional zero to your top line, then your brand objectives for that year need to be the same. And the reason why I do it kind of the other way around is because it makes more sense long term. So if, for instance, you marry your brand to your business objectives and you're able to kind of have the both of them work in synergy, your marketing now becomes 50 billion times easier because it'll actually be effective. Because what I could never understand is why people run with a marketing strategy without a brand strategy. I could never understand that because your brand, especially with social media, your brand is a personality. Your brand is your business. And when you think of it, brand, you are a brand. So it's something as simple as like, for instance, we know Apple is associated with, you know, very expensive tech. Some people call it overpriced technology. We also, we know that Nike, for instance, is associated with, you know, athletic shoes. You are known for something else. I am known for being incredibly intense and, you know, very meticulous. That's my brand. Like, what, what what people are actually talking about right now about me when they describe me, that's my brand. So the difference between brand and reputation is you've con- you have got control over that narrative. So it doesn't make a difference if you are a solopreneur, if you are a consultant, if you're a coach, if you're a multinational business, you have to take control of that narrative because people are going to talk anyway. So why not, you know, have some control over that? And I think that's a really, 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 sorry, I've got have a sip of tea, as the Brits normally do. Yeah, so, oh, I don't know what's going on with me today. So it's just been a day I've had, like, a very long weekend. So, um, right, so literally, you have to start with your business objectives, then we go to your brand strategy, then we go to your identity. Now, most people do identity first. I don't, because I think if you do your identity first, then you do your brand strategy. That's putting the cart before the horse, because then what is your brand going to be visualizing? Doesn't make sense to me. So your identity should be dictated by your brand strategy. Then you do your marketing and sales strategy. And basically, when you do it like that, your marketing and your sales strategy are just execution. It's really not that complicated. Like, for instance, I can literally rattle off mine at the moment. I am, my business objectives is literally to get this Nexus program off the ground. That's just one of them. The brand is centered around that. That's the brand's objectives. And the identity is me. (laughs) But literally, that's that's the identity. I am the identity. Um, Because it is, it's it's a very one-on-one thing and it's a consultant thing. So, you know. And the marketing is one, this call is one of them. It's all brand awareness. It's all getting that content out there. So then when I break it down, I'm like, oh, I can record videos. Okay. Then I can take the audio out and put it on a podcast. I can take the video, put it on my YouTube. I can then take that video, put it into a blog, embed that into a blog, take the transcript. I've got blog text. Hmm. Then I can take that, throw it up on social media. I've taken one piece of content. I've just put that four ways. And guess what? If I do a 30 second video every day, which I can record one day a month, because it's really not that long, then I've got a month worth of content kind of done. Do you see how easy the execution is once you've got your brand strategy done? Because then it all just comes down to how can I then make my marketing more efficient, more effective? How can I make it work for me? How can I use AI to help me break this down and make it stupid simple? So of all the videos that I record, well, I've recorded, I've not actually published a lot of them yet because I'm, you know, procrastinating for some weird reason. But yes, again, you see, this is this is the process. So you will literally understand and I get entirely what everybody else is going through. I'm not going to be, I'm not one of those people that goes, oh, I've done this 10 years ago. No, I am in the trenches with all of you anyway. 
So I know what works right now because guess what? I'm doing this right now and I'm doing the work myself. I'm hands-on. I refuse to outsource most of the stuff. Anything else that's been outsourced has been outsourced to AI, which I still can kind of control. So, you know, you got, I, I know it works because I'm hands-on. I'm right there. So that's the difference that I guess I make. I guess that will be another USP. I don't know. I'll probably listen to this recording in a week's time and go, oh my God, that was such a great idea. Because I'm making ideas as we go along. And again, it's because, you know, I'm an idea generator. And that's why one of the big things on the Nexus program is the idea generation that happens all day long. We find solutions to problems all day long. That's all we do. So literally now I'm like, right. So I've just taken one piece of content that's taken me 30 seconds to record. It'll probably take me about half an hour to write if I'm free writing it, but I can speed that process up if I use ChatGPT to write an outline for me. So then something that would normally take me an hour will now take me 15, 20 minutes. I'm a one man band or a one woman show. Actually, let's let let let's rephrase that. I am a one woman force of nature. <laughs> right? So I need to figure out how to make the most of my time while doing this, while making that marketing effective, while using ChatGPT, which everybody else is using. And I am not one of those that'll tell you, don't use ChatGPT because everybody else is using it. Use it. Use it because guess what? One, everybody else is using it. And two, don't play this game on hard mode. It makes no sense. Use the tools that are right in front of you. For instance, I do not have a fancy camera. I've literally got my phone in front of me and it's on a little, it's, it's on a kind of fancy tripod. All right. I'll, I'll admit that because it stops. If I shake, it actually kind of makes sure that it doesn't shake the camera. But because I'm ADHD, so I'm like constantly buzzing. So right now my leg is like doing this in the background. <laughs> so make sure that my camera doesn't move as well. But because I'll probably give somebody a seizure if they've got epilepsy, honestly. But yeah, literally like, this you've got to remember to make the most of whatever you've got in front of you it's about playing it smart not hard none of this shit takes it's not rocket science it really 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 isn't and everything that i do technically is googleable like there is nothing that any of us do that you can't find on the internet we can all learn everything i can learn coding off of youtube i have actually so it's not really that hard, but the difference with hiring a consultant would be to get the 15 years of hard blood, sweat, and tears, the stuff that we've already learned, the, the hard lessons, the things that we've learned with clients as well. So it's really, really important that we remember that and don't, don't be afraid to ask for help. This is probably one of the biggest challenges that I have personally, I do not ask for help. I never did. I never liked it. I was like, no, I got this. I'll learn this. I'm going to do this my way. No. In the end, again, playing it in a hard mode. So find the resources around you that really, really, really work. Now, the most important part of all of this branding stuff is being able to define that identity. Now, I do have a free um, brand audit a self audit it's like 64 questions they are 63 of them are yes no I don't know questions I'll send a link for that um, after this but use it use it and abuse it use it now see where and be very honest with it because if you're not honest with it then it's not going to work for you so the idea is I'm not gonna pick up the phone and call you and be like oh I see that your score is like 13 out of 50 like I think you should buy my services now. I'll probably message you and ask you how you're getting on and say, oh, by the way, you can do this, 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 and, and knock that off and get that done. But use the brand audit in the order that it is. When you get your results back, the stuff that's right up at the top, that's the basic, basic, basic stuff. So if you if you find that you're, you're a lot of red at the top, then just pick one thing and work on it. That's part of your brand identity. That is the exact same questions that I will ask in a very basic audit. So 
use it because it's worth like three thousand pounds and i'm giving it away for free because i do think that there's a lot of businesses out there a lot of small businesses out there a lot of entrepreneurs a lot of solopreneurs that need this kind of support so i will send out that link and absolutely go get it if you haven't already added me as a um as a friend not as a friend as a contact on your phone then you won't see my whatsapp status if you I've done it, then you will. I will try to post a link for that as well. I'll try to keep that almost in my status all the time so that everybody has kind of got access to it at any point in time. I'll try to keep things as easily reachable as possible, right? So as I said, I'm just trying to hear, I'm I'm just here trying to help everyone. I'm just trying to help as many people as I can with as as with, you know, with the least amount of effort on my end, because obviously if I did all of this for free, then I would not have money to pay my bills. So need to be able to, we have to find that balance between the two. But my role in all of this is just to help as many people as possible reach their full potential because there's so many brands that I come across and it's hard. I'm like, I just look at them and I go, I just want to help you. I just want to fix you, you know, because you could do 50 million times better if you just literally, if I whipped you into shape, essentially, and it doesn't take long, none of this stuff has to take long. Agencies will tell you, oh, to build a website, it's going to take you six months. Well, no, it doesn't. I can virtually build a website for you top to tail in a week and have it shipped in a week. It does not need to be custom coded unless you are like, coca-cola you don't need a custom coded website it again does not need to be difficult it doesn't some people don't even need a website if your consumer base is purely on instagram like for instance my sister-in-law she is a um she's a nail technician she doesn't need a website because she does all of her all of her sales via instagram so if you think that you don't need it absolutely if you think if you're at that point now I would, for SEO purposes and for longevity, I would always recommend one, highly recommend it. But honestly, I would say, oh, where's everybody gone? Everybody send the video off. Now I'm like just talking to myself because I don't know. I can't see the head shaking to see if you guys are actually listening to me <laughs> or if I'm just going to be talking to myself. But yes, so thank you for Perfect. That's absolutely fine. You guys go get drinks and stuff. But honestly, it's just, you know, I I need that. I need, I almost need that physical feedback. So I know people are kind of engaging and stuff. Thanks, guys. Oh my God, I love you. Right. So creating a distinctive brand voice. You need to think about the tone of voice that you want your brand to have. So for me, <clears throat> I need to find this very delicate, um, it's like almost like a thread between being aggressive because that is a part of my personality. I am a little bit more aggressive than most women are. I am very, I'm brutally honest and I am incredibly direct. But I'm also very soft and I'm very friendly. And so I need to find that kind of balance between the two. So when it comes down to voicing, if you look at some of my older content, you would find that the content is much more aggressive than the new stuff. Because now I'm trying to find that voice, that softer voice. Before I was hiding away from the camera. Now people have met me, seen me. They're like, oh my God, you're so nice. Your your brand is like really, really strong, but you're such a down to a person. And I'm like, yeah, I just... I tend to voice like that because I am also like that, but people don't see the other side of me until they actually see me. So you don't get to see the messy side where I'm like ADHD brain's gone completely that way. I'm supposed to be here and the brain's gone that way. And now I don't remember what I'm talking about because squirrel, like that is literally me. And if you work with me for five seconds, you'd be like, yeah, yeah there's no there's there's no hiding from that diagnosis ever like if I could probably most likely be the poster child for it you know so and I embrace it 
I run at 3000 miles a minute. I do not stop. I struggle to sleep because I'm buzzing nonstop. I'm just like, I'm so excited about everything. And this stuff that I do is the shit that fires me up the most. If I could never, ever, ever take money off of people and my bills were paid, I would still do this. And that's how I know I am doing the one thing that is I love the most. And I think that is also really, really, really important for you to figure out long term. I have never met anyone who is so passionate about accounting that they can't sleep at 3am because all they're thinking about is numbers. I've never met anyone like that. So if you can find that thing that fires you up every single day, the thing that you do not want to put down, the thing that you are so obsessed about that you are willing to risk burnout for, that is what you should be doing. That is what you should be doing. If you're willing to go, oh yeah, I'll pull that extra one hour. I got this. Like if you can do that with the stuff that you're doing right now, then you've you've reached the one thing and you're doing the one thing that a lot of people are not doing. And it takes years to figure that out. And some people never, ever figure it out. I've watched my whole family, my my aunts, everyone, my mom, everyone in miserable jobs. Why? I didn't want to do that. I wanted to be happy. I don't want to be chained to a desk. No, just it doesn't really fit my personality anyway. You know, people tell me what things like what I should be doing. And I'm like, no, Um, I was born a maverick. So if a boss told me I needed to do this, I was absolutely like right there, ready to challenge them. And if you're that kind of personality, then 100 percent be an entrepreneur, because then, you know, you'll 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 find your happiness in there. So. And all of this does make sense with branding. It all ties into branding, because if you are passionate about what you do, your brand will naturally develop. If you're not passionate about what you do, it's a little bit harder and you kind of got to fake it until you make it kind of thing. And on the topic of fake it until you make it, if you, for instance, want to be a multinational company within five years, which is relatively achievable if you have the resources to do it, then you've got right now, you've got to be in that mindset now, not in five years. You've got to do the work now. And a lot of what I'll be talking about in the Nexus program is about mindset because branding and marketing and business and everything with life is mindset. So for instance, I want to have a platform that for instance, works for me. I want passive income in this because I did not passive active income for three, five years. I've done it for a lot longer, but specifically for three years nonstop. And I worked myself into a burnout so bad it took me two years to recover. So that's why I've got this new model. And that's why it's a lot of it is a lot more relaxed. I thought, you know what? I wanted to be a consultant when I was 40. I'm now 33. Now you guys know my age. Um, But I brought it forward because I thought it's nice to have it in the future, but I need this now. I need this today. I don't need it in seven years. I need this to be what my life is now. And I've worked everything out around it. So even if you think you've never done something before, you probably have. I've been consulting for my entire career. Because what is consulting? Consulting is literally just, well, directing and consulting. So, you know, you, you've done it before. If you've ever had a client, you've probably done consulting before. You don't need another certification unless you're becoming a coach. And then yes, absolutely get certified for that. There are some things that require certification. Project management is always also one of them. So, you know, so, um, Right. How much time do we have left? Oh, we've got 30 minutes left. Awesome. Right. So one of the biggest things in branding is consistency. Now, I'm the queen of inconsistence. Again, another thing that I have to work on, but I have to figure out how can I be consistent 
when I am consistently inconsistent. So great thing for that is AI. AI helps with that. I make sure that content is scheduled because I don't know what I'm going to be feeling like today. And I don't know what rabbit hole I'm going to fall into because I can wake up today and think, oh, you know, this little thing is on fire over here and then something else is broken. And I'm like, uh, I kind of need to focus on these things right now. I don't have time to do that post today for LinkedIn. And guess what? That post is not going to happen. So I've just missed that window. So schedule your stuff. And on the topic of scheduling, if anybody of you know me longer than a few months, you'd also know that I'm a massive, massive, massive fan of time blocking. And it's not just because of the ADHD. I think time blocking works well for everyone. So time block, time block, time block, time block, because tasks require time. So what I do is I put my tasks, things that I need to do in my calendar, and I assign a time for them. And that's how I get all of this stuff done. Because if I don't do that, then tasks just remain on a task list somewhere else. And then something that might take four hours doesn't actually get done or it might take an hour here and an hour over there when I could have just if I schedule in four hours to get done it'll be done dusted next on to the next thing so if you haven't already looked at time blocking absolutely do it is 100% like the biggest life savior for me and for a lot of people who time block so and time blocking also helps with keeping consistent with your brand because you have to schedule in the time to do the videos, do the work, and don't be afraid. Don't think that you need, you know, like shiny gear. Honestly, I only bought a backdrop because that's a backdrop. I only bought a backdrop because I absolutely, I hate how when you blur your background, I hate how it cuts my hair because I've got lots of it. And that used to just drive me up a wall. So, okay. I spent 13 pounds and I bought a backdrop. Problem solved. So what was my next excuse for not doing video? Oh, I don't have a nice camera. Yes, you do, Des. You spent God knows how much on an iPhone. That's your camera. I don't have a fancy mic. You don't need a fancy mic. I actually do have a cheap mic, but it's not plugged in today. But, you know, you... You don't need all of the expensive stuff. So if you think that your whatever's holding you back, just work around it. Work around it. Because this is something that I've noticed coming out of and doing a lot of research in different countries. I've noticed that the African nations make the most out of the least. They are probably one of the most innovating people on the planet. If you want to be an entrepreneur or you are an entrepreneur, you need to learn to do that. You need to learn to make the most out of the least. And it's the same with your time. You need to learn to make the most of your time spending the least amount of time doing it. And why is any of this relevant to branding? Because you need to make the time to do the branding stuff, to stay consistent. Because it's all well and good if you've spent the money to hire somebody to you know, do this fancy brand for you. If you're not executing on it, then that was a colossal waste of everybody's time and money. Not to mention the resources that you put into it. Like you've got this amazing brand. You ain't doing nothing with it. What was the point? It's like buying an expensive pair of shoes that you'd never wear. What was the point? I'm looking at you, Louboutin. Yeah. You know, so you have to you have to make the most of it. If you spend the time and you invest, you invest that time and you invest that money in it, you th- now need to stay consistent with it because it doesn't make sense. So consistency again goes back to productivity and all of the other stuff I was just talking about. So you have to figure it out. And some of us out there, I know a lot of us work uh, we work on our own. So of you guys who've got your videos on, are you solopreneurs? Are any of you solopreneurs? All right, I'm seeing, right, the, all of the nods. There we go. I know Manju's got 
you know, he's got he's got his his massive team of developers, you know. But honestly, if you're a solopreneur, stay you know that your time is so limited because the last thing you want to do at the end of the day is put this on, curl this, or do whatever you got to do with this, and then take a deep breath and then record a video and you're like oh hi guys this is da, 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 da. no you don't it's hard it is hard it is hard to when you're tired when you feel like you're on your last stretches of energy to then try to record a video because it's on your to-do list and then you know what happens i'll do it tomorrow and then tomorrow turns into next week, which turns into next month, which turns into a year that you haven't done anything. And I'm saying that because I have done that exact thing in 2023. I chickened out. I looked for every single excuse under the sun. So I actually made my business model in such a way that I did not have a choice but to do this. And I kind of reverse engineered it, but now I have to be on camera all the time. So I really don't have any more excuses. So the videos get recorded. Now it's just a matter of editing and uploading. But, you know, we've got step one done. Step one is better than none, right? So consistency, consistency, consistency. And I'm saying that not just for you. I'm saying that for myself because we are all in the same boat, right? Now, storytelling is a huge part of branding. I know they say it's like a big part of marketing. It's not. It's actually the branding side of things. So with your storytelling, you need to figure out what kind of storyteller you are. I'm a kind of a round the houses, but it'll all make sense. Because while I'm building all of these houses, then I string it all together. And then you realize it was a whole complex I was building in the whole story. Right? That's why I went all the way down when I was talking about productivity before I even spoke about consistency. I was talking about time blocking and all of that stuff. That all chains in after a while. That's the kind of storyteller I am. I talk, I'm authentic. I'm very real. I'm down to earth. I am what you see is what you get. I don't care if you are a homeless guy on the street or you're the, well, now king of England. I was going to say queen, you know, rest in peace, queenie. But, you know, I don't care who you are you're going to get the same version of me. So it does not matter. And I think that is very, very important. Now, branding needs to be authentic. And for instance, if I, I'm very down to earth. So I grew up out in the Caribbean. Um, and Caribbean people are very, very down to earth kind of people anyway. Um, but if I decided that I wanted to brand myself as something like, Paris Hilton so you know the blonde kind of um, not quite ditzy character because that's very stereotypical but a stereotypical kind of Barbie doll person that would be the most inauthentic thing I could do and it won't work it'll work for like five seconds and then it will come crashing down because I can't make that work for a very long time I can make it work probably couple of days and then it just breaks down because that's not real it's not authentic and guess what happens when you associate your brand with something that's not authentic everyone else knows everybody else knows so if for instance you are branding yourself as this person that you don't align with yourself it's not going to work. It won't ever work, ever. Not in a million years. So push past whatever you're feeling right now, push past it and dig deep and figure out if you're a solopreneur and you are the brand like I am, you need to dig deep and you need to figure out who you are. And the branding process if you don't know who you are, the branding process can be grueling at first, but then it suddenly gets very easy because then you just, it just kind of clicks and then you go, oh, this isn't really that hard after all. Once you figure out what works for you, 
and who you are and the basis of your personality. It's like my branding was disjointed before because I had very aggressive communication that went out there. You know, I can literally mass accelerate your supercharged service. I can't think right now, but literally it was stuff like that. It was really strong, very strong language. And then when people met me, they were like, oh, wow, like you're actually not as aggressive in person as your copy makes you sound. And that's when I realized that's that's not being completely authentic. And I can't, like, I, I don't even want to think about the amount of people that I lost along the way by not being authentic. Because you know, people would have eventually met me and they would have liked me and I would have gotten business. But if you pause for a minute and think about what about all of the people that did see my stuff and went, nah, that hurts because that could have been easy, easy revenue. The people who just went, mm, nah, not because they didn't like what you're selling, not because they didn't like your prices, not because of anything other than they did not gel with your brand because your brand did not speak to them. And yes, I have a lot of people who do not like how direct I am and therefore I can't work with them because that doesn't work for me. I need to be direct. I can't sugarcoat things. It's just, it's not in me to do it. And I'm not politically correct. And, you know, if you can't deal with that, then you can't work with me. Now, I'm able to say that and I'm able to, to you know, have that as part of my brand because I'm able to stand against that and go right this is who I am and this is a kind of this is the kind of clientele I need my clientele to be able if you for instance like I once ran a campaign in Trinidad for a brief time but in Trinidad when I was doing social media the campaign was entitled your social media is shit and do you know how many people turned around and said Oh, you shouldn't say that in your advertising. If you're telling me this, you can't be on social media, especially if you're in Trinidad. You can't be on your social media, on social media. So you really can't, right? You can't, you can't be out there because if you're sensitive to that, you're sensitive to that because first of all, it probably, they probably, you know, took it to heart and went, oh, wait, yeah, my social media is shit. Who does this girl think she is? If that's how you are now, I can't work with you anyway. But that campaign helped me weed out so many people because it's really authentic anyway. And it was authentic to me because that's literally, I was, you know, I had bright purple hair and I was really annoying at that point. I was kind of obnoxious, but, you know, I'm not as refined. I wasn't as refined as I am now. I'm still not very refined, but yeah. You know, I was I was a rough cut diamond then. And that's the difference between then and now. I got away with that because, to be honest, if you were in the Caribbean and you couldn't take a simple word like shit, you could not take anything. You couldn't handle the because I specialize in controversial campaigns I would drive high numbers of engagement by saying something that was a bit like, ooh, that was a bit risky. That was my, that was my angle at that point. And that was my brand. And it worked really, really, really well until the economy crashed. But, you know, it all works out in the end, which it did for me. So, and my brand evolved. Now, I can't run that campaign now. I can't because it's not authentic to who I am today. And that's another thing you've got to think about if you've had a brand for a while and you've not updated it and you've not looked at it and you've not evolved it and didn't evolve with you or your business. That's another reason why you probably need somebody in so that they can help with that evolution process. And I know that there are a lot of people out there who think that consultants are just there to fleece you for your money and leave and there are lots of consultants out there who do that I've experienced it myself but there are a few good ones out there and having an audit done an independent audit done helps tremendously and it helps because honestly like 
I'm just gonna mute everyone again because I can hear someone's noise. Right. It helps because you've got somebody objective coming in, somebody who's not biased to your company, looking at it from an outside perspective, looking at it from what a consumer might see it as. Because I'm not gonna lie, if somebody turned around and said that, you know, oh, people have turned around and, and told me, oh, I don't think that, you know, your branding marries up with whatever. And I was like, I'm sorry, who are you? But they were right. Because it was my branding and I was I had an, an, an emotional attachment to it. I'll never forget I had my um my current partner, he had this, he he actually drew their logo. And I saw it and I was like, oh, these colors. No, 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 no. We need to fix this. He was adamant. Nope. I did that when we first started the company. It's never going to change. We went through the ringer with it, right? I ignored it completely. Went ahead, did a refresh. Not a complete redesign, just brightened up the colors a bit made it a bit more bold, made it a bit more in your face, right? Made it stand out a bit. And he took one look at it and went, that looks good. So sometimes it's, you need somebody outside to just kind of look at your stuff and tell you the things that you probably don't want to hear. And, you know, it happens to all of us. We've, we're, we're, we're all human, right? We have emotional attachments to the work that we do, especially if it's something that we designed and we put our efforts into because we've put our heart and soul into that. And but it might not, it might not be what your what what's relevant to your brand. It might not be what's relevant to your consumers either. So you've got to remember that with branding, it's yes about you, but it's also about making sure you're resonating with your target audience. I've spoken a lot about the person and the people behind the brand but it's not it is actually a relationship between you and your consumers because for instance and I've seen a lot of brands do it myself included sometimes your brand is just not quite hitting the mark and you're thinking well is their loss you know maybe they weren't my target consumer maybe they were and it's just that your brand didn't hit the mark because it doesn't quite resonate with them Maybe you're talking to the wrong audience. If your brand, if your if your business isn't doing very well, it might not necessarily be that you've got a shit product. You've probably got a really good product or service. You're probably one of the best at what you do, but you're not resonating with people. Your brand doesn't resonate. It might be that you're targeting the wrong clientele. It might be that you're targeting the wrong people. It might be that your brand doesn't resonate with the right people. So again, that's where you need somebody independent who can be objective. And I'm not saying this again because I want your money. No, because I can't service everybody in the world anyway. But I'm saying this because it's really, 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 really important for us to remember that having an independent auditor come in and look at your stuff does not mean that they want to take your business. It just means that they are able to see things from a very, very, different point of view which is necessary it's very necessary because for instance you might you know when and there are a lot of women in the room today so and probably guys who go shopping if you have real friends who don't don't are just not who are not just yes people right you go out you try a dress on you are in love with the silhouette of this dress but it's not very flattering for your figure real friends or objective people will tell you how about this and find something different for you if you for instance go into a bridal shop I don't know how many of you've gotten married before but if you go into a bridal shop it's the same thing they are there they are professionally trained to tell you what looks good on you you might fall in love with a mermaid silhouette you know the ones that literally you cannot walk in you kind of have got to like take one inch steps I kind of like strut along like a penguin. Anyway, now I've got that visual in my head. But yeah, you know, you, 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 everybody knows what I'm talking about is these dresses that you cannot walk in and then they pair them with the shoes that you also cannot walk in. So it's like, what, why are you doing this to yourself? But 
they are professionally trained to tell you it's not the right fit on you. How about something else? And they'll go find something that works with your figure. Now, that is pretty much what a brand consultant is like. They, they are the people that will tell you kind of what works well. They're also the people who can tell you that you're looking at the wrong target market. Because, you know, I've 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 worked with people and they've they're literally just looking at the wrong people. Like you want to charge high end prices, but you're looking at people who can just about afford to live. Wrong, wrong target market. Or you want to work with those people, then you need to adjust your pricing. If that's if that's the target market that you want to work with, then you need to adjust your pricing, adjust your brand. So a lot of it goes into that. Your that it is all comes down to positioning. So the second most important thing after your brand, or I would say with your brand, is positioning. Because I actually put half of what's in a marketing strategy, I actually do put it in my brand strategy because it shouldn't be in a marketing strategy. Target market positioning, all of that stuff needs to be with your brand because that stuff doesn't really change. But again, it's on your brand strategy because your brand identity needs to be, you know needs to be dictated by that so if you for instance have do your brand do your brand identity and you've not done your positioning you've not figured out who your target market is then how on earth are you expecting that brand to resonate with that target audience if you've not done it before you've designed the brand do you see what i mean like it, again it's putting cart before horse like it really does not make sense so that's one of the reasons why i always do a brand first brand first and then we look at marketing and marketing for me is just execution you know your brand is your your business is like the bones in your body your brand is like everything else that goes with it your marketing is like your car think of it like that your marketing takes you from a to b and if you've got if you look good and your you're very well presented, then when it comes to doing the sales, it's 50 times easier because they always say it's all about impressions and first impression really does matter. It's perception and optics. It's one of the reasons why you'll find a lot of people are going to put themselves into enormous amounts of debt for a shiny car because of their job, because they have to live in their future lives, not in today. And it sounds ridiculous, but it is unfortunately true because that's how people work. That's how humans work. And when you're doing branding, you need to be able to understand how human beings work. Because if you don't understand how human beings work, then first of all, you're going to have a lot of problems socially, like on a personal level. And secondly, you're not going to, again, resonate because you need to understand how people are wired. If you don't understand how human beings are wired, then you're doing the wrong thing. And it's one of two things, two choices you've got to make. You've either got to learn or you've got to pivot and do something completely different. But entrepreneurship won't be for you at that point. So, okay. I am actually now exhausted of talking because <laughs> I've spoken for 55 minutes, nonstop. Um, Q and A's. So do any of you have any questions for me? Uh, now is the time to, I just realized that I probably should have swapped about 15 minutes ago to allow for questions. Does anybody have any questions? Manju, I know you, I always raise like a million questions for you. Can't hear you, Manju, hold on. Uh, um, I can ask all to unmute, does that work? Yeah, I think I could un unmute now. Yeah, you can unmute. Yeah, go on. Yeah, um, thanks, Des. Uh, no, I, I'm just soaking everything in. And this brand thing, as I said, quite a few times, it's kind of new to me. And um, uh, I'm still trying to wrap my head around brand and then the marketing. Because as I said earlier, I started marketing already. Now, now I, I do realize branding is a, as important or even more important than marketing. And um, so I, I need to now figure out what my next steps are. So I'm, I'm, I have a lot of questions, but um, I guess I'll accumulate all of them and then start firing at some point in time. 
<laughs> yep, yep. Suzanne, do you have any questions today? No, nope, you're all good. Awesome. Um, Joseph, do you have any questions? Mr. Olasoji. Someone is unmute. Okay. I have a question. Yeah, go for okay. it. It's Zainab. Hi. Um, so how do you because you did say earlier that um when it comes to branding, like you you tend to do the identity of things later on. But when it comes to let's say like a more untraditional business, um, like an invention, when you're selling yourself, how do you like do that without right? Being, so, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, particularly for you, because I can I know what you do anyway. So I would still do it would be business strategy, brand strategy, identity immediately before you even think about mapping out your marketing or anything else before you even go to investors your brand needs to be done mm. because but if is you it the brand of myself or was it like of the business because I did do the business first and then it's when I started pitching and stuff that I started to realize that I'm actually selling myself yes so that's why I'm it's gonna be like... both for you it's gonna be both because you are because you're mm. pitching it's almost as though you're you're you are the brand yeah so you're pitching yourself as the inventor as well and mm. think that because you have to if you are growing a business and you're not just selling the invention itself you're not just selling the rights to go and make it but you're getting investors so you can be the forefront of the business you're going it's going to be personal branding as well as corporate branding for you okay. so this is where it does get tricky for people who have service-based businesses who have who are not the face of the company or who have b2c businesses or businesses with products so mm. it's always going to be it's always going to be a little bit more tricky um for me as a consultant consultants coaches entrepreneurs um thought leaders authors they're all it's all personal branding for them whereas okay. in your situation it will be both it will be both um both personal and and corporate branding okay okay yeah thank you no problem Right, uh, Joseph, let me just unmute you. Okay. Hiya. Um, uh, uh, good afternoon. Uh, it's, it's quite some time. It's a bit dark from here, so where I am presently. So actually for me, I what I need presently is investors. So I have been on a product for quite uh, some years now. So what I need is actually investment. So I need investor. So I don't know how, how you can help me to get the right investor. So that In investment is all about branding. It's all about personal branding. Because as Zainab just said, yeah. it's it's a lot of um it's a lot of selling yourself. And any type of sales, especially if you are the salesperson, salespeople in particular, it's actually a good point. Salespeople in particular need personal branding because you're selling yourself as well. So you're, it, you are, it's almost as though you are the brand. It's 14 hours. So you need to, I think you need to look at your personal branding because if you are, for instance, pitching and not getting investment or not being able to connect yourself with the right people, it's because you haven't positioned yourself enough to be able to access that. So if I were in your position and I was looking for investment, I would think, okay, where do, like, who do I need to speak to and how can I align myself into that, into that world? But then what do I need to be presented as? Who do I need to be at that point? And again, it comes back down to mindset where you need to be your future you today. So if for instance, you want to have, you have to picture yourself in the position where you've already got investment because that will give you the confidence as well to pitch. It will kind of take the edge off of, you know, you know, that new, that newbie kind of feel where people go, oh, well, you know, this guy doesn't really know what he's doing. You don't want people to think that if you're pitching because then they won't trust you. So a lot of it is back down to perception. It's, or it's, 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 you know, it's a lot, it's, it's all brand. It all comes back down to brand. It's crazy because when I talk about communication, when I talk about 
um, even marketing. Marketing is all, even pitching. Pitching is literally, you know, it's confidence, it's knowledge. It's confidence backed with the knowledge, but it's also about the optics. So if I walked into to an, to an investment pitch and my hair's a mess, I'm not even bothered to make a, an effort with makeup or anything because for women, unfortunately, we I know that everybody's like, you shouldn't have to, but if you are if you look like you've just rolled out of bed and you've not even bothered to even wash your face and that's what you look like, don't expect much coming out of that meeting. And it sounds awful, but it's true. It's just the world that we live in. So until we evolve beyond the beauty industry, which I don't think will ever really happen, but until we evolve past it, that's this is what you're stuck with. So it's even down to little things like that. It's perception, it's optics, it's confidence, it's mindset. A lot of this plays a massive, massive role in branding. Does that answer your question, Joseph? You are muted again. One sec. Yes, it's on sec. Thank you. Not a problem. Uh, Tony had a question. Let me just unmute Tony. Hi, Tony. Hi, hi. Hi, Desiree. Uh, I actually didn't have a question, but I can always ask a question. Uh, in when you were talking, I was talking about uh, storytelling. Yeah. And I, I, it's really important to to look at storytelling, and uh, it, even with with Joseph there, you have to have a story that you tell. Uh, at but what at, at what point? Because what you're saying, you should have your brand first and then your identity. Yes. But you have to tell your story in order to get people interested because that's really interesting. We all write for stories. And yes. that's how you get them interested. But the story you're telling is about you. It's not, so it's like you're establishing your identity first before the brand. You see what I'm saying? Well, not really because it's while you're doing... All of the storytelling stuff comes into play during your brand strategy. So you work all of that stuff out. And then when it comes to your identity, that's almost as though, right, you're now almost putting the putting, painting on the picture kind of thing. So for instance, if you don't include storytelling and you're going to pitch to an investor, then when it comes to when you're doing your brand identity, it's not going to be included in that point. So if you include it later on, then you're then you need to go back and revisit your brand to make sure that your brand lines up with storytelling as well, because you can have a brand that doesn't really support storytelling. For instance, Coca Cola, you don't associate Coca Cola with storytelling. You might associate it with happiness because of the happiness campaign that they did a few years ago, but you won't associate it with a, as a storytelling brand. They don't tell stories. The only story that they tell is a Santa story every Christmas because it, it's it's their it's the Coca Cola Christmas ad, but other than that, they're not they're, they're not a storytelling brand. Well, starting off, Coca Cola started off with their story. They're not telling the stories that they're telling now. It's a different, you know. The brand have grown to a point that they don't need to tell their original story because I think I heard of how Coca Cola was invented. Da, 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 da. Right. Yeah, that 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 does come in later. Like now, we know that the story of Colonel Sanders and like how the whole thing happened. They they have used storytelling to connect with people on a much more emotional and a much deeper level. Um, but you should be building storytelling into your brand strategy now, because we know that humans are wired for stories. We know this, especially as a smaller business. So you have to kind of take advantage of that today. And if you do your brand strategy today, regardless of whether you think it's a personal brand strategy or a corporate one or one for product or whatever it is, it should include that. Now, if he's pitching to an investor, then he does need to incorporate storytelling in his brand strategy so that his ident the brand identity, it, which is how he presents himself, is much more solid. because. Again, marketing wouldn't really necessarily be 
his first thing he would probably because in doing it for investing is a little bit different because when we talk about brand marketing and sales marketing and sales is the execution marketing is where you kind of get your brand awareness out there and make people aware of it but sales is really where the magic kind of happens and you can't have one without the other and neither of them work without a brand now there's a little gap there just before the marketing stuff that's for investments and that there still comes after your brand strategy and your brand identity because it doesn't matter whether it's a person or a thing it has to be branded because if it's not branded properly then it just won't work and in Zainab's case for instance she's going out to speak to investors but she's 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 seen it herself where she's realized she's actually selling herself more than she's selling the product and that's entirely true especially if you're an inventor so if you're selling something and you're looking for investment you need to sell yourself and again that comes back down to your story so if i was looking for investors for my company i would be talking about you know hum- the, the humble beginnings talking about living in third world poverty especially if i was doing it here because then they'll then they can see the drive they can see the hunger they can see the ambition see the passion because that's what's required in a company to push a company forward so they'll see that and you tell that you tell that story because that would be the story that I would kind of be focusing on because the humble beginnings and the drive forward that is what pushes you out and pushes you forward so that's what they'll be looking for in that storytelling gotcha right um I've got time for one more question and I'm gonna have to run because I have a podcast recording that I am a few minutes late for. So one more question, anyone? Going once, going twice and sold. Right, cool. I now need to skedaddle. Um, I will see you guys next week. If you are interested in the Nexus program, please, please, please message me. Um, hit me up on WhatsApp because that's where you're going to find me. And I will see you guys very, very, very soon. Thank you all for giving me your amazing time. Hope you all have an amazing week this week.